I know many of you are overgivers, and I know it because I got it, so I spot it. I am a recovering overfunctioner, overachiever, and overgiver. So today we are diving into the caregiver archetype so we can learn how to balance all that shit. Mm, I've totally gotten into that that caregiver space and uh, learned the hard way that I needed to take care of myself first. <laughs> yeah, it's the cost of self-abandonment. It happens all the time. And we're doing it either because we're programmed that that's what a good person does. Mm -hmm. We're just so used to saying yes. We're seeking validation from somebody. Like there's so many different reasons. I mean, for me, culturally, it's always been instilled in me. You have to take care of your siblings. You have to take care of your, your home. You have to, all these different things that we were taught from a very young age of, you know, how you have to be and how you have to care for others, you know, specifically if you're a woman in the in the culture, it's a it's a big thing. We we'll definitely have that caregiver, caretaker role. I totally get that because it was indoctrinated in me too from a young age that, you know, you're of value if you serve. It was kind of one of our values actually is showing up for other people. And those are awesome values to have. So I don't want you to think that that's like a totally unbalanced place. It just gets unbalanced when we start to go to the extremes with it. Mm. I find it interesting on, on the fact that it's designed, or somehow it became more in in design for women per se mm -hmm. i mean i know we all have it men and women have that care taker caregiver within us that's that's part of of who we are but i've noticed that in society that seems to be pointed more towards the women than it is the men it's because of traditional roles back in the day yeah. where i mean if you, i mean if you want to look at it actually Men are caregivers too. Men are the ones that had to leave their families, not stay at home and enjoy them. They were out working or hunting, trying to provide. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a whole different aspect of caretaking. Yeah. So maybe you just have it from... A lot of people just don't see it as though being a caretaker or caregiver, but be more of a provider. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think they, they match those two together. Exactly. Yeah. So know that there's d many different ways, masculine and feminine type of mm -hmm. energy ways that you can be this caregiver. Mm -hmm. I think we've also been taught that taking care of yourself or putting yourself first is selfish or egoic or just wrong. And right. I think all of us are unlearning that right now because we've all hit the wall. We've burned out. We get to the point where we start to feel used or used up mm -hmm. or like we're there for everybody else and nobody's there for us. Right. And we've learned that we we need to have a full tank in order to be able to serve and, you know, provide care or anything like that. And before, like you said, we were doing it the other way around. We were giving, 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 giving. And we were on an empty tank and still trying to figure out why shit isn't working. It's because we're empty. There's no way that you're going to be able to give anything to anybody if you're empty. Exactly. So, And you'll know if you're in this place because it's it, this is like the shadow side of caregiver. If you don't ask anybody for help, you just try to do it yourself. Um, or if you're feeling exhausted. If you're like when somebody's asking you for help instead of being like, yeah, like and, and being lit up by it, you're like, oh, they're texting me again. They're asking me again. Yeah. which you've established that pattern with them. So you probably have a thing where you feel bad saying no and you don't have a healthy boundary with people. So these are all different ways to look at cues to see if you're more in your shadow side of your caregiver or if you're solid in giving from a place of just it's who I am and it's what I want to do and it makes me feel good. I'm not expecting anything. I'm not looking for anything from it um, because I think a lot of people do it because they get that that dopamine hit off of it. Mm. They get that feeling of like, like, yeah, I, I showed up. I did this a little bit egoic or looking for that person to say, oh, thank you so much. I needed that. And then you just feel like, okay, I'm a good person. I did a good thing because they just validated, reflected back to me that I'm good. Mm -hmm. And I think people need to understand that, that you already have that in you when you're looking for validation in in that form you know you're you're selling yourself short really because you do have it in you and you don't need someone else to tell you you're doing a good job right tell yourself that 
you know, again, you, you continuously figure out how to nourish yourself first so that then when you're out there doing what you do, and if it's giving a lot of yourself, then you're doing it from a balanced place because you've nourished yourself the way you need to, so that you can do what you do. Right. And I think a lot of people also give from a place of not wanting to be judged. Mm. And we all, because we're judging everybody else, we're figuring everybody's judging us. And so we're trying to do what we're supposed to do. Um, I remember when I was in a caretaking role with my grandmother when she was still here. And I started to get really... That was fun. That was... Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was fun at first. Yeah. Like, I really loved that, you know, I knew she was alone. My grandfather had already passed. Mm-hmm. I lived the closest to her. Um, so I knew that, you know, she was happy when I went over. And, you know, I got to spend really good one-on-one time with her and learn more about who she was in her life and... Um, and help her out. And it felt good until it didn't. (laughs) Until it got a little overbearing and a little controlling and and, and all these other things. And I started to get sick myself. Um, So I started needing to put boundaries in place. And that became very, I mean, it was difficult for me to say, no, I can't. Um, But I knew she had other resources that she could tap into. It wasn't like I was abandoning her or anything. Mm -hmm. It felt like it. So I had to really check myself and like know the truth of it is. Always check on what the actual truth is, not the story that's feeding the emotion inside of you. Um, And then also there was the pressure from the rest of the family Mm -hmm. because they didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. You've done it. You're used to it. You know how to do it best. You know how she likes it so that she won't be on anybody else's case as much, you know, because you can you can do it the way she likes so you should do it. Yeah, just, just, just today, just tomorrow, uh, next week too. And oh, can you just go over again? Like, it was just this pressure, pressure, pressure. And a couple times at the beginning, I think I gave in, mm-hmm. and then I was like, no, like I'm getting, I'm getting more and more sick, and nobody's showing up to help me. And she probably would have if she was well. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. I, I learned my strong hell no really really quickly and it was hard it was like I felt like I was disappointing people like I felt all the things I was not being true to who I am because I am the one that always shows up Mm -hmm. but this is a whole new version of being true to me because it's a real caregiver sits in a place of self-acceptance self-understanding and makes self-care a priority and that's what I had to learn the hard way right so a lot of us slide into our caregiver in this backward sort of way <laughs> mm-hmm. when you've been giving care and doing it for love and doing it for all the right reasons. And then it slides into all these, these messy places mm-hmm. of needing the validation of expectation or of just overgiving. Right. I mean, if, if you're a caregiver, caretaker, um, when it gets so bad to your own detriment, that's definitely when you want to, you know, draw that line, draw that line, create that boundary. You know, I'm playing witness to that right now with my parents. Yep. You know, my stepdad is, is taking care of my mom and there's got to be a line there somewhere concerned about his health, you know, because he's doing so, so much. He's forgetting about himself, you know, but how do you tell a parent that, you know, how do you, how do you support that? And that's, those are the 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 intricate little waves <laughs> that we have to go through as you know children of, of aging parents right so yeah you, you get into that into that caretaker caregiver form but you know when you're playing witness to it oh my god mm. it can be hard it can be tough because over giving a, is a common symptom of there's always a root there's always something deeper we talk about that all the time mm-hmm. over giving is commonly caused by anxiety <laughs> you're like hmm, I'd identify with that yeah or trying to be in control of the situation because it doesn't feel like you have control and it would feel better to be in control of it yeah um so check if that's underlying so check if it's this expect nothing appreciate everything <laughs> like are you are you there then you're in caregiver are you in like I need to control this because I'm afraid for these people because I love them mm. take a step back um or yeah, you're needing something like validation. And that's really how when you start turning it onto yourself of um, how can I give myself that validation? How how can I decide that I'm enough right here just the way I am without that person having to thank me? 
And most people, which I think is really funny, looking for validation, can't accept thanks when you give it to them. You give them a compliment like, oh, thanks, that's awesome. Oh, no worry, no problem. Like they poo-poo the energy away. They want the energy and then they throw it away and then they have to go do something else because they it, they didn't get fed because they wanted the energy. Yeah. It's so interesting. And you'll see caregivers are very, if you're in your true power of caregiver, they're very humble and they'll accept, you're so welcome. You know, they'll, they'll accept the thanks because they know it's an energy of, of give and take. It's not an, an energy of um, charity. Like I'm doing this because I'm in a great place and you know, I can, I can give you $20 while you're struggling. It's, it's not from that egoic type of place. That's, that's yeah. the dark side of caregiving. Right. I, I learned early on all those, all those little, you know, details of it. You know, I, for a very many, many years, um, I was a caretaker, you know, I was a, a social worker in, in taking care of people with developmental disabilities. And I ran several residential programs and, caring for them was like the ultimate experience for me you know because you you got to really see them in their element first of all and second they teach you so much with with no words whatsoever just based on their actions because a lot of them were nonverbal, mm-hmm. and just being in that role you know i i got to really see where my limitations were you know, where the limitations of my staff were, you know, where their, their own desires, the client's desires were in, in how to best support that for them. There were, there were certain points in, in their lives that we've got to play witness to when they shifted, you know, and, and it was so many different things. I learned so much, let me tell you so, so much about caregiving and being a caretaker. And it, it, it filled me in so many different ways. And, and I thought that that was cool. And it wasn't because, you know, you know, I'm here I am, I'm going to make their life better. It was more about, look, they taught me so much that in return, it filled me. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a really cool experience. I did that for many years. It was awesome. Right. So, I mean, as you can see, she was truly honored by spending time with these people. It yeah. wasn't just a job to her. Yeah. It's, you know, in her heart to serve. Mm-hmm. And it filled her because she was putting all of herself in it. She was expect, you know, just showing up to do it, not expecting anything out of it. And then it's just naturally that energy cycle oh, yeah. just fills. It was great. It was, it was completely um, mutually beneficial exactly it really really was that's a balanced strong yeah. caretaker caregiver yeah. energy nurturer mm-hmm. archetype mm-hmm. and i mean you can see all the things like she showed up with empathy she showed up with awareness she showed up with curiosity she showed up really wanting to deeply understand what their desires were not just what her, like her desire was to give or to caretake mm-hmm. um it's it's looking at things as a huge big picture just wanting to make it better that's what a caregiver does. And I think and we have some really awesome examples, I mean, fictional and non-fictional in yeah. this world. Um, a lot of us are Harry Potter fans. Mrs. Weasley is the ultimate, ultimate care- caregiver. Uh, she made sure that, you know, Harry and everybody else had a safe place to land um, with all the comforts of home, somebody to listen to them, somebody to nurture them. It was just, and, and to keep them in line. Like a caregiver isn't just like warm and fluffy and just making sure you have, you know, a pillow and a nice meal. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's also protecting because I think a lot of people look at protecting as, you know, being a warrior, that type of thing. But a caregiver is, I mean, who's, who's more fierce than a mama bear? Mm-hmm. That is true. <laughs> so, I mean, there's all these different aspects because a lot of people um, will come to us and we're like, you need to really lean into your caretaker a little more to help you with what you're working on. And they'll be like, oh, that's just such soft energy. It's weak energy. And, and they're not seeing the, I mean, it, it is soft because you want to be received in comfort and that type of thing. Uh, you know, that's a cozy type of energy when you want to really do deep work, you want to dive into something or you want to be held. Um, but you also, you, you've ever had somebody give you that hug and it's just like strong and you can just melt into it because you just like, you know, they've got you mm-hmm. like that type of thing. Yeah. 
I've had I've had that and I've given that. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been on, on both, the, ends. both ends of that. Yeah. It's a it's a beautiful beautiful yeah. thing. Um, another like uh, an actual person that most of us know is Princess Diana. I mean that woman just had an energy that you just yeah. felt seen. You felt of value. You felt like the warmth of you know just her smile and her presence being around you. And she just. She didn't give from a place of having to. She gave because she truly, truly, truly loved it and did things that were deep from her heart. Yeah. Perfect role model. Absolutely. So you if you if you take a little bit of time and and really pinpoint who the caregivers are around you, mm-hmm. you know, and give them some props, man. Because they're doing some good fucking work. <laughs> exactly. And it doesn't have to be, you know, just the person caring for the aging parent. I mean, this could be you know, your coworker who always makes sure like the break room is taken care of and everybody's work is already passed out and on their desks and ready for them or likes to go straight in the supply closet like or bring snacks in for the break room. Right. Uh, caretakers come in so many different forms. It could be the boss that got there four hours before you just to make sure everything was good when people got in. Um, or it takes, you know, after working 12 hours, they take that extra half hour at the end of the day to check in with you and really, really listen. So it's also another thing. Caretaking isn't just like an actively doing thing. Um, I mean, I guess listening is actively doing something, but it's not like you have to be baking or cleaning or right. something like that. It's just um, kind of being being present. Yeah. Like when somebody needs to just vent and, you know, you simply sitting there and listening and, you know, holding that space for them. That's you providing care. Exactly. That's you making them feel safe so that they can, you know, say and do whatever they need to do to get it out of their system so that they can be balanced again. That's, you know, there's so many different forms, like you said, to be able to to be a caregiver, you know, but... (laughs) And we all have it in us. And that's that's one of the things that we want to, you know, you know, impress upon you. So look for that caregiver in you. And how are you supporting and nourishing the caregiver in you? Exactly. I mean, recognize things like when you meditate, you're caregiving for yourself Mm -hmm. and the whole rest of the world because you're shifting the vibration. When you're doing breath work, same thing. When you're drinking a glass of water, you're caregiving to yourself like all these simple things you can be like yep doing that doing that look for the evidence because that just shores up the positive and the strength in the caregiver into in you right so make sure you're looking at are you giving from a place of need are you giving from a place of i should or i have to or are you giving from a place of pure love just because you want to make your little corner of the world a little better and that's important to you and you want to serve. That's the caregiver. All right. Be kind. Peace. Peace.